Hi everyone, Nick Kretikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor, and tonight you're watching me on Bodabra. Uh, we are here on Bodabra every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, and I can't give you the other time zones because I always forget, but it's always 7 p.m. Eastern. Behind the camera tonight is my lovely sister, Bella. So as you guys come in, uh, let her know that you guys appreciate her recording. As you guys know, my family kind of takes turns, and they all help out each night. Um, so yeah, we have lots of bows to create. We're going to kind of do a blend again of spring. Uh, we're going to have one winter bow and then spring, Valentine's Day, and one summer bow as well. So here's kind of the little assortment of ribbons right here. We have some of this canvas. We have some of uh, the denim. We got this one. Look at how pretty that one is. So we're going to just be making an assortment. We also have this beautiful summer bush too right here with some sunflowers. It's got some red geraniums. And when I think of summer, I think of red geraniums. They are my absolute favorite flower um, for summer, and they really remind me of Yaya. So for those of you guys that, you know, follow me on Nick's Seasonal Decor, you guys know Yaya by now. Yaya is the best. We love Yaya. And yeah, we're going to get started with that. Here's the other ribbons we're going to be using. We created a small Valentine's Day bow using that last week. Uh, and this week we are going to be doing a much larger bow because it's so pretty, and I love it. So... Let me just quickly share that and get the video nice and ready. There we go. Welcome everyone. Hey Welcome. Messi, how you doing? Thank you guys for tuning in. So the first thing we're gonna do, which is a little bit different than what we typically do, uh, but I just, I can't wait because I wanna see how this wreath turns out. So we are gonna make our wreath first using this bush, a 14 inch grapevine wreath, which is a smaller wreath form. We have our large bow d'arbre and we have this beautiful blue ribbon. So what do you think of that, you guys? Show some love if you like these two together. And for those of you interested in the Bodabra, along with the ribbon kits, we're going to be using one of the ribbon from the kits today. Uh, you can purchase through our affiliate link down below in the comment section. Bodabra will be popping in, uh, posting the link that you guys can purchase from, and they sell everything on their website. So here's the wire. We are going to be using Bodabra's 100-yard uh, uh, wire in silver. It comes in silver or gold, and I love silver. This year I've just been on a silver kick for whatever reason, um, so I'm going to be using the silver today. We'll just cut a length of the wire off, take it, fold it in half. That way we have kind of a, you know, an open end on one side and then a closed end. Then we'll just take that and place it into our bodabra right in the middle. Nancy says, hey, Nikki. And that's what I used to call you when I, <laughs> when I was a kid. Hi, Nancy. So if you guys don't mind giving this video a like as well as a share, I see we are at 250 people. So thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, Mondays are actually our busiest day. So we are live uh, on Bodabra at 7, we are live in Nick's exclusive wreath community at 8, and then thereafter we go live on my business page. So we do a lot of tutorials on Mondays, but it's so much fun. Uh, this morning we filmed a home talk tutorial. I'm not sure. There, the wreath is behind us. We created a pampas grass wreath, which you guys will see in two weeks. But the first step we did was just cut some tails. So these tails are about, I'd say, 28 inches on either side. You know, I wanted some long tails, so we're going to be using these. So Bodabra pinned the link that you guys can use, my affiliate link down below, so you guys can purchase your Bodabra. Bodabra also has a mini version that we've used a couple of times in our lives. Uh, but today, it's all about, you know, that wow factor. So we're creating very big bows using our large Bodabra. Now that we have our tails in place, we can also add some extra tails if we wanted to. But I think two is enough for today's project. We'll just take our ribbon, place it inside. And Bella, can you see how we have a little bit of an overhang? Yeah, let's get up nice and close for this video. Uh, a little bit of an overhang right here. That's going to be very important because if you, you know, mess up pulling your wires, uh, you know, you might lose your ribbon. So always leave a little bit of leverage. Now we'll just twist our ribbon and put it inside our bodabra. I know lots of people use their bodabra like this, uh, where they create their loop and then continue making their loops. Uh, so let's try that today because that's not how I use my bodabra, is it, Bella? No, it's not. So we all have to figure out for every single tool in our shop, we got to kind of get our, our hands used to it. Uh, so the way I do uh, my Bodabra and the way I use it, I'm going to show you guys after this because I can't do it this way. I actually like to twist my Bodabra uh, and just twist in the ribbon. So I take my Bodabra, I turn it one turn like that, one half turn, place my ribbon in, turn it again a half turn, and we just repeat that process over and over and over again. So we have four loops on one side. I see that we're at over 350 people. Thank you so much. And right here, right now, if you guys don't mind dropping a comment uh, down below that you guys like seeing us on Bodabra, you know, my whole point of doing these videos more than anything is to hopefully inspire you guys and motivate you to make bows. 
I, Bella, I can't tell you, and you see the comments, how many people struggle with bow making? A lot. I, a lot. I can't make a bow That's for life of me. The, that and my glue scale are the two biggest comments that I get uh, and questions that I get. And I know lots of people are very scared to kind of dive into it, and it's very easy. Trust me, if I can make a bow, you guys can make a bow. And Bow Dabber just makes it so much easier. So now that we have our ribbon cut uh, and placed inside our bow, uh, our bow maker, we're going to take our wire. doesn't matter which way you take it. Just take it to the middle and pull it tight. So now it's not tied off, so it will fall apart, but it won't fall apart if you just let it like sit there, you know, you have the, the mailman comes, you know, so whatever's happen, uh, happening, you can definitely step away for a minute or two and your bow won't, you know, fall apart. Then we just take the wire from one side to the other, to the back side, and tie it off a couple of times. So we wanna make sure we have a couple of knots, like so. And before we even fluff it, let's secure it to our wreath. So we're gonna place this a little bit different today. We're going to take it and place, uh, place it in the lower left-hand corner. Um, Kathleen wants to know where you purchase your grapevines. So, like I said, you guys can get your grapevines from anywhere. We talk about this a lot. Um, Michael's has some of my favorite grapevines, but grapevines are a natural product, so each grapevine is going to vary. So if you only make a handful of reeds here and there, my biggest tip would probably be, uh, be to go to your local store, with a coupon, of course. Don't be forgetting those coupons. Uh, and picking them, like hand picking them, so you get the best grapevines. Because if you order online, you're never sure exactly what grapevine is gonna, you know, you know, come your way if you're buying in bulk. So we're gonna just tie it off now, secure it to our wreath, and then we can begin fluffing it. And I see we have almost 450 people now. Thank you so much for all the shares and likes, you guys. All right. Now our bow is nice and secure. So I'm gonna fluff this backwards so you guys can see. We'll pull apart our loops. As you can see, this bow is definitely a large bow. We didn't skimp uh, with the size of these loops, although we did kind of skimp with the amount of loops, and that's A-OK. -okay. I didn't want to have a super full bow. I wanted to have a big bow, but not necessarily full. Uh, Missy says, Bow Dabber and your videos have helped me so much, I couldn't even make a bow when I started weeds a couple years ago. Oh, thank you. Debbie's that's what we like to hear. Debbie says, I love watching you, and I'm getting ready to purchase a Bow Dabra. Awesome, Debbie. So now let's work in this, and I think that's the perfect spray for it. What do you guys think? You guys like that? It goes really well with the blue. I think it goes well with the blue, too. So we're going to snip it off. I do need to get new wire cutters, Bella. I know we have a couple packages that I haven't opened up yet, uh, so that's definitely on the forecast because these are getting kind of old <laughs> and kind of hard to deal with. But that's A-OK. -okay. We'll make it work. So we are going to use one entire spray. Uh, I want to make sure this wreath has you know enough product on it. So if you're ever unsure, too, you guys, of what products you may need, what products you may want um, in a design, how to match things, my biggest tip is to actually purchase your sprays pre kind of put together. Does that make sense, Bella? Yeah, I think it makes sense. When you purchase it like this, the colors are already put together, the textures are already put together, and you have to do a lot less thinking. Uh, whereas if you purchase things individually, it might not look exactly you know what you want. Uh, so these are always a hit because they're already put together for you. So just pulling up some of the greens, we're gonna keep this wreath kind of compact since it's such a small frame. So there we go. What are we gonna work in first? Let's work in, let's do our sunflowers first. So I think we got four of those sunflowers that we can place in. So this goes to show that you don't have to be working with even numbers. I mean, odd numbers, right, Bella? Because we have an even amount. But if we wanted to just work in three, we could just work in three. And guys, don't forget, Sandy will be going live right after Nick. Awesome, yes, so Sandy will be live on Bodabra thereafter. So everybody go ahead and watch Sandy after this video. Sandy is the owner and creator of Bodabra and she is awesome. I can't say enough great things about Sandy. Ooh, and so. she, she will be making a dollar store mini gift basket and also a Valentine's Day wreath. Oh, look at that. We love our dollar store project. <laughs> That's so much for sure. Fun. Right, Bella? <laughs> That's How for sure. How many dollar store projects have we done over the years? We've done a lot. Yeah, everybody loves dollar store projects. So definitely tune in for that. All right, so we have our three sunflowers worked in. Hi, Suzanne. Welcome. Now we'll work in our beautiful um, geraniums. So like I said earlier, geraniums are those flowers that remind me of my yaya. Um, so when we were little kids, I don't know if Bella remembers this, but when we were little kids, Memorial Day weekend, every year me and yaya would always go and get our geraniums. And she's always been a fan of red geraniums. They used to be my absolute favorite. But now I really like white geraniums on kind of more softer colors. So that's usually what I go for. Uh, but Yaya still to this day loves her red geraniums. Look what I did there. See? I just placed one right in the heart of the bow. 
Keeping this wreath simple, you guys. My favorite color combo is blue and yellow. Awesome, Paula. So hopefully this will become one of your favorites. Okay, so we have our flowers in place. Let's work in those three blue flowers now. Catherine says, still your old glue skillet. Yes, yep. Catherine. <laughs> I haven't had time actually to change it out. Um, we woke up bright and early today. We filmed, like I said, a home talk tutorial. Then we did some editing. Uh, so we've just been, it's been crazy, you guys. Even though the holidays are over, that does not mean we're stopping. Um, Joanne would like to know where the florals came from. These are from Michael's. So I picked these up last fall and we're using them in kind of a spring and summer wreath today. So another thing too, you guys, is if something's labeled as winter or Christmas or whatever, or whatever the season may be, think outside the box. Think for other seasons and other holidays. Uh, you don't have to save, you know, products for the next year just because the label says Christmas on it. That's how they get you at those stores, you know. They put seasonal labels on it so that you feel as though you have to use it at that time of year, which is just not the case. There we have a simple little wreath. What do you guys think? Show some love if you like that. That's love really the cute. colors. Me too, Diane. I love blue, yellow, and red together. I think it's the perfect summer wreath. Or spring wreath too. You know, spring is going to be here before summer, so you can have this up for spring and summer. So there's our simple wreath, you guys. Now let's make some bows. So let's get back to our large bodabra. So let's get up close to the wire too. They love to see the packaging. Uh, so this is the wire. And as I said before, it comes in silver or gold. It's a 100-yard spool, so 300 feet, um, which is a lot. Most uh, All of these rolls of ribbon we're using today are pretty much 10-yard rolls, besides, I'd say, two of them, three of them. So pretty much everything else is 10-yard uh, rolls. So take our little length of wire, place it into our bodabra, like so. Now what we'll do is we'll come back in. Let's use the ribbon that came with the uh, the kits. So again, you can order your kits from the link down below. They'll have it pinned. Isn't that pretty? I just love burlap ribbon. And this is a nice, thick quality one. It's not, you know, inexpensive by any means, like the, the quality of it. But the price is inexpensive. So you're, you're definitely getting some value, some bang for your buck with this one. So for this, Bella, let's do... My favorite with burlap to this day is still funky. So we're going to create a funky bow. Let's do it. So we'll just create some loops and some tails, not being super specific. That's one thing I really want you guys to kind of grasp is that when I make my bows, as you can tell, I don't put much thought into it. And if you start overthinking it, it's not going to turn out the way you want. So I don't measure. I don't, you know, sit there and be super strategic. I just cut and make it work. And you'll kind of surprise yourself when doing stuff like that. So don't sit there and be super tedious. Trust me, I've tried and it's gotten me nowhere. So you don't have to put as much effort into it as you may think. Thank you, guys. All right, so we'll place another piece in the opposite direction. Come back in with, let's do at least one more to create a nice and full bow. So this is a two and a half inch ribbon and I think it came with six or seven different types of ribbon, uh, at least in the kits. I'm not sure exactly how many, but a, a decent amount. Place it into our bodabra like so. And let's just do one more for the sake of it. What do you think, Bo? Let's do it. Let's do it. I love my bodabra. I couldn't make a bow without it. Awesome, Denise. That's what we like to hear. All right. Our final piece. Place it in. Again, I'm just alternating it so that we have a loop on one side and tails on the other. That's the only reason I do that. Now we can take our wire, bring it from one side to the middle, and then pull it through. Now you can pull it out of your bodabra, and it's not tied off, you guys, but you can definitely put it down for a couple minutes. Take your wire from one side to the other, pull really tight, and create a knot on the back. Yes, so definitely comment down below, you guys. Uh, bodabra is giving away a free roll of scrunchy ribbon. The color choices are red, silver, or gold. And I want to say that I'm still on that silver kick, but since Valentine's Day is coming up, I probably would get red myself. Uh, so, you know, for my own curiosity, definitely let us know what color you would choose, but all you have to do is comment down below that you'd like to win. And we've had lots of winners say that they've never won anything in their life, but they want a free roll of scrunchy ribbon. So, you know, all it takes is just one comment and you could be the lucky winner. So definitely do that. Uh, Diane says you are the best. Thank you, Diane. All right. So we have three tails left and then what we can do is fluff this real quick and then we are not done. We still have lots of bows left to make. All right, our final tail, like so. 
now what we can do is start separating those loops. I do want to tie it off one more time though. I'm feeling it. If I can find the loop, there it is. So tie it off. There we go. So since it's such a thick ribbon, you do have to put a little bit more force into it when fluffing it, but that just means it's gonna hold its shape a lot better than a flimsy ribbon. Uh, so a bow like this, I think is perfect on presents. It's perfect virtually anywhere. You can prop up those loops. And we actually made a wreath with this. I wanna say, I don't remember, Bella, if it was last week or the week before, um, but we did make a wreath and it turned out really cute using this ribbon. And I think we created other bows using it too. So you're able to create three, four bows, substantial bows, from one roll of ribbon. Um, Tammy asked, can you make a bow using the scrunchie ribbon on live for us? Yes, um, I have a roll somewhere. So it is a non-wired ribbon and I don't use it a lot for, you know, artificially designing, but for like hair bows and stuff like that, it's a, I, I guess a great ribbon for it. Uh, so I'll find the rolls and we'll definitely use it next week because it's kind of cool. We have, I think the red color, I think we have it in red because I was on that red kick last year. So there's that bow, you guys. What do you think? Give some hearts if you love it. Teresa would like to win. Cindy would like to win. Who knows? You guys might be the lucky winners. But now, let's create a bow using this. So again, we'll cut another length of our wire. And I like to cut my wires longer than we may need. I'd rather be a little bit wasteful than too wasteful. And what I mean by that is it's always easier to cut the wire off than it is to string a whole new piece. So if you need a whole new piece, you're wasting, you know, a lot of uh, wire. So same goes with ribbon. I'd rather cut it a little bit longer than too short uh, because it's always easier to take away. For this bow, let's start with our tails. And this is a pretty ribbon. Can you see those polka dots? We have yellow, blue, and green polka dots on a bright, hot pink ribbon. We'll place that in like that. So we have our tails. This is the only way I can make a bow too. Happy with my bow to ever. Would love to win some ribbon. Awesome, Terry. Yes, so comment down below, you guys. We're going to take our ribbon, backside facing up. Place it into our bodabra. We'll create two loops on either side. And even though, I mean, I just don't measure you guys if we're being 100% honest. Uh, so even like in the bows like this, where it's a little bit more precise, I still don't measure because we can always fluff it to give the illusion that it's perfect. Now what we'll do is we have two kind of equal size loops on either side that are about three inches. Now we're going to come back in with one loop in the middle that's only going to be about an inch and a half at max. And that's more than enough for the bow we're creating now. Take our wire, bring it from the outside to the middle. Pull it through. and bring it from one side to the back. That way we can tie a knot in the back. I always like to make sure everything I send out, you guys, is as you know secure and stable and professional as possible. So I always make sure I tie everything super tight, double check my reeds, double check my center, everything I ship, I always double check. So um, you know, if you're giving bows to friends and stuff like that, they may not know how to put it back together like you do. Uh, so make sure that it'll never fall apart for them. Um, Sandy will be making bows using the scrunchie ribbon on her live right after Nick, oh, so look at stay that. tuned for that. Yeah, Sandy will be live after you guys. For all of you asking about the scrunchie ribbon, Sandy will be demonstrating it after. Sandy, use red for <laughs> Valentine's. Well, she said she was making Valentine's. Oh, yeah. Red, so she probably is going to be using the red. So there's our very simple bow. What do you guys think of that? That would be cute on like an Easter bunny as like a little bow tie. Oh, that's tie, very cute. Yeah, right? that would like be cute. A little bow tie. Um, I mean, I should walk around town like this, you know? <laughs> But what we're going to need now is, let's do, let's do this. It's kind of farmhouse, and I really like this ribbon. Uh, so this is a Sam's Club ribbon for all of you guys that know Sam's Club. I see we have almost 500 viewers. Keep those shares coming, you guys. Uh, let's see if we can hit that 500 mark. Cut a length of our wire. And place it into a Rodapra. So just that little slit on the top, that's where we're placing it. And then what I like to do is I like to take my wires and just tuck them underneath. That way we get them out of the way, like so. And what ribbon did I say I was going to use? The Thief. gingham. Yeah, the farmhouse All right, let's one. use this gingham. So this ribbon, I'm going to be honest with you guys too, it's not great quality. It's very, very thin. But 50 yards for 7 bucks, you can't go wrong. So we're going to use this. We're going to do a traditional bow now with a lot of loops. So that last traditional bow we created wasn't super full and luxurious, but this one's definitely gonna be a lot more full and pretty. So we'll take our tails, place them into our bodabra. Jill says, winning anything would be great. Love Nick's work. Thank you, Jill. 
Yes. Who doesn't want to win a free roller ribbon? So then what we can do is take our ribbon, place it into our bodabra, and start creating those loops, you guys. Like I said, I don't measure. And once you get the hang of it and kind of get a feel for your bodabra, you can crank out these bows. You can, you know, watch a TV show and sit there and make 100 bows, you know. Um, it just becomes like second nature to you. So continue rotating. Like so. And keep in mind, you're not going to always want a super fu uh, full, luxurious bow for every design. Uh, more often than not, I actually do less loops like we did with the first bow. That way I can come back in with additional greenery and, you know, floral products to really make my bow kind of incorporated. I don't like when my bows stick out too much. I like them to be a little bit softer. Uh, so that's what I like to do. Does Hobby Lobby sell bow dabra? Um, um, Hobby Lobby and Michael's sell Bodabra. I'm not sure if they have any in stock right now. For a little while, they were sold out. Uh, but definitely check in. Or you, what you can actually do is go to the, the website down below. They have the comment pinned. And you guys will be able to see all of their products that they have. Suzanne says you are teaching me so much. Thank you, Suzanne. All right. Snip it off. Take our wire. Bring it from one side to the middle. Like so. Then just... Tie it like that. Well, not tie it, but like cinch it together. Now we're going to tie it. So just bring your wires to the back of your bow. And create a knot. Very, very simple, you guys. The more complicated you make things, the more complicated they're going to seem and the more difficulty you're going to have. When you start thinking in terms of simplicity and if you don't get it on the first try, that's A-OK, -okay, then you'll definitely master it in no time. I don't want to say master because, I mean, we all constantly learn... Uh, and bow making is not something that, you know, you're going to be 100% on all the time. Uh, but practice definitely will help. And you'll feel a lot more confident when you start practicing more. So then we can just fluff, fluff, fluff. Pull those loops apart. And then we have a very thin, kind of cheap ribbon. But it looks still really nice. Right? I like kinda it. Kind of like a little country bow. All right. So there's that bow. Let's create another bow. How are we doing on time? we got a few minutes left. So let's create... We have to do a Valentine's Day bow. Oh, of course. You know, we can't not do a Valentine's Day bow. So this one, how about we do a funky but two types of ribbon? So we'll use that, and we'll also use that together. I think that'll look nice. that look nice, yeah. So I often get asked to how I secure my ribbon, and I, um, you know, I went to school for floristry, and, you know, back when I was in high school, I actually used to do a lot of corsages and boutonnieres. So all I do is take my corsage pins or boutonniere pins that I've had for years and still use, and all I do is I just poke them in, and it'll keep them secured. That way you don't have ribbon kind of going everywhere. So we'll start off with this. This is a two and a half inch Sam's Club ribbon. And actually, let's cut our wire first because I always seem to forget to do that. Uh, so we'll cut a length of our wire, like so. Place it into our bodabra. Tuck it in underneath. Create one loop. Like so. It doesn't have to be super big, you guys. I mean, it can be if you want. Depends on where you're placing your bow. Um, Catherine asked, do you use the wire to tie it onto a grapevine wreath? Yes, you can. So we did do that. I just wrapped it around. Um, it's too complicated to feed through. I don't have the patience for that. Uh, so what I do is I just wrap it around and then put, take the, the wire from the back, bring it up, and then tie it over the bow. And we have our winner. Congratulations, Gail Campbell Carroll. Congratulations, Gail. So, Gail, send Bodabra a message and uh, let them know your choice of color, whether it be red, silver, or gold, and they will be happy to send it your way. So there is our second loop. We'll come back in with even more now. There's this loop. So let's do, let's do three of each. That's our second loop and second tail. Now we'll do our second of our heart ribbon, which is really Valentine's Eve. Snip it off. And now our third and final two and a half inch, and then all we have to do is add that one and a half inch, and then we are done with this bow. Then we can dovetail it, fluff it real quick, and show you guys how it turned out, which I'm sure it's gonna turn out nice, especially a combo like this. So now our final loop this one here. Let's 
snip it off. Take your wires, bring them from one side to the other. Tighten it. I know how awesome. Congratulations, Gail. I like the funky bow. Thank you, Joanne. Yes, it's a very pretty bow technique. Um, Cindy wants to know why you're putting the smaller ribbon before the larger. Nope, no rhyme or reason. So like I said before, you guys, whenever I add things in, it's there's no real particular method behind my madness. When it comes to designing wreaths and centerpieces and stuff like that, I'm a, a, lo a lot more like methodical. Uh, when it comes to bows, I'm not uh, for some crazy reason. So, you know, like I said, when you think just, you know, when you overthink, that's when you have com like complications. Just try it out. I don't, you know, I don't place the one and a half inch on top for any reason. We could have started with the one and a half inch and then worked in the two and a half inch on top. And when we fluffed it all out, it would have still looked just as fine. Uh, there would actually be really no difference at all, actually. So just quickly dovetail, take your ribbons, fold them in half. And I see we're almost at 500. Thank you, guys. All right. Almost there. We have a few tails left. So how was your day, everyone? I hope you guys had a great day. Hopefully you did something fun and interesting. Um, we filmed all day, and then, of course, I had to get my coffee. You guys know how I need my coffee. So I got my coffee. Then I came back, and me and Dad shipped a bunch of reeds that went to their new homes today, which I'm excited uh, for them to receive. And then, yeah, here we are. Time flies by. Time's no joke. So fluff out those tails, pull everything apart, get it to your liking. Fluff, fluff, fluff. And my, you know, reasoning with fluffing is, you know, it's the most important step in my opinion, not actually making the bow isn't as important as fluffing it. Uh, once you've kind of made your bow, then you really can bring it to life and get it absolutely exceptional. Um, so definitely fluff and also when you fluff it's not going to look as great until it's on its final project So whether it be on a wreath or whatever That's when you really really can fluff the heck out of it and bring it to life and make it look great So we are just at that time uh, Here is the bow. We just finished up I want to tell you guys too. like I said don't overcomplicate it when you sit there and stress over you know super specific patterns and uh, putting things together and which goes on where and how big that's how you stress yourselves out um, when it comes to me making bows, I don't, I just eyeball everything sizes. It depends on what you're working it on. So let's say if we're putting this on a lantern, you'd probably want to go a lot smaller than this. Uh, if it's a large lantern, this may be a okay. So there's definitely a hundred variables per project. Um, and it'll still turn out just as nice. So give a bow a shot. If you guys haven't yet, I highly encourage the Bodabra. You can purchase it in the link in the comments, along with the wire and the ribbon kits, uh, of which this ribbon came from, which is probably one of the best burlap ribbons I've worked with. See how thick that is? So this is one of the ribbons in the kit. Also, we created this bow, which is very pretty. I like this one as well. Uh, just a traditional kind of thin and flimsy, everyday uh, farmhouse type bow um, with this kind of darker uh, buffalo check. It has kind of that ivory jute color with the black, but the black's more along the lines of like a dark, dark gray. We also created, oh my gosh, how many bows did we create today? This bow, which is probably my favorite from tonight, just because I think it's so cute with the little polka dots. Let us know what your favorite was too. And then first, but last, our beautiful little grapevine wreath. And this took one bow that we made in a, a couple minutes, and it took one bush of flowers and one 14 inch grapevine and a little bit of hot glue, and that's it. So again, thank you all so very much for watching us tonight. Each and every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we are live here on Bodabra. I want to thank Sandy for having us as a guest uh, each Monday. And let's all go watch Sandy now because Sandy will be live in just a couple of minutes. Right, Bella? Yeah. And Sandy, for the, all of you guys that were uh, wondering about the scrunchie ribbon, she will be using that tonight in her demo. Uh, but thank you guys again. I hope you all are having a wonderful new year. Uh, fresh start. Now it's time to get, you know, making bows. So if you're nervous about making bows, give it a shot. Worst case scenario, me and Bella always talk about this. What is the absolute worst case scenario? It goes wrong. You, know, you start over. You can. You don't like it. Take it out. If, if you don't like it, that's literally the worst thing that can happen. So don't be afraid. Uh, definitely give it a shot. You can surprise yourself. And as I always say, once you get the hang of it once, 
it, it'll, it'll stick with you forever. You're not going to sit there and forget, how do I make a bow? It'll stick with you. So thank you guys again. Love all of you. And we will see you uh, live on Bodaver in a few minutes. Uh, Sandy will be live. And I'll see you all tonight on my page because we will be designing something as well. So thank you guys. Love you all. And I'll see you next Monday at when, Bella? 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.